Hey everyone, welcome to another Doug's Lab video. This is a continuation in the series of videos about me building my new atomizer burner. And uh, yeah, lots of progress has been made. Uh, unfortunately, my high voltage, I have my high voltage power supply right here, but uh, unfortunately, I have not yet found a suitable way to hook, hook it up. I've tried several electrode configurations uh, at the front here, but all of which have started either arcing to the wall of here or arcing to this, or um, they'd burn up or something like that, and it was just it's a pain in the butt so uh, I think the final solution is going to end up having to be me drilling holes in here and then uh, putting the two electrodes through this and then uh, sealing it with like furnace cement or something because this gets really hot so I don't know I still gotta work that out but either way the atomizer is uh, nearing completion and uh, now you can see I've got the atomizer in there just as always it's just hooked up to my blower um, this is the fuel line fuel valve, the compression fitting's not yet done yet, but I just have it slipped on there. And then this is the air line, as you can see I've soldered a little extension onto it. And uh, the air line goes to the air regulator, which is what I bought at the store, and it was in my previous video. And you can see I got my nice uh, bleed valve here, and uh, my pressure gauge. And this is just a tape connection right now, but that will eventually be, I'll use the compression fitting, uh, which is actually sitting over there. And I will hook it up to this compressor, or that compressor, the bigger one. I'm not sure. It's actually pretty satisfactory with this little one. So, I might just find a mounting scheme for this little one. And, you know, make like a chassis for this. Or I don't know, I still gotta play around with it a bit. And of course the running gear for the, um, the compressor, the starting cap and such. And then I gotta make an input filter for this before I run it for a long period of time. Anyway, um, so I thought I'd demonstrate uh, how well the atomizer works. Which is uh, <laughs> surprisingly well. So I've got the compressor plugged in. Okay, electrical checks out. Alright, and I'm going to take this fuel valve, set it over here, and instead I'm going to pump this uh, bucket of water. Follow the hose up. Here we go. And just get this hose on here as best I can. I need two hands for this. Oh, no, nope, it's going. Doesn't have to be a particularly good seal, just there we go, that's good enough. Okay, and then simulating my fuel tank being it'll suck from up here, but uh it works better if I put the fuel bucket on the table. Or water bucket as the case may be. Oh yes, and then uh instead of shooting the stuff below the table, the water. I'm going to move this, but that requires two hands because i got to pick up the compressor in this at the same time or else I stress this joint out. That tape, or the joint here, since I don't have the compression fitting set up just yet, uh, it's just taped, so I do have a little bit of leakage over there, which makes this inefficient, but uh, it works for uh, the purposes of demonstration, which is what I'm doing right now. Okay, so we have the setup. Bleed valve open. Compressor is ready to rock. Make sure the grounding strap is out of, the harm, out of harm's way. That'll be good enough. Okay. It's good. Alrighty. Here we go. This thing is pretty powerful. Okay. So, as you can see, we're not drawing anything to the tube. Pressure's at zero psi because you know, the bleed valve's open. And that's this is blowing out to the air right now. And then when I close that valve, it'll build pressure in the system, which turns on the atomizer and sucks water through and everything else. So start closing the valve. See pressure's building, and there we go. And we're climbing. We're running about. 23, 24 PSI. You can see the fuel line drawn from this bucket. And there's the stream. Oops. <laughs> I just lost my air fitting. Yeah, see, well that's why I need to put the compression fitting on there. But anyway, um, you can definitely see by the... Uh, marks of water on the floor over here even all the way over here shooting water on this wall and on this box and stuff 
and the burner is way over there. So, um, yeah, you can definitely see the flow rate is very, very high. And that's what I want because in the past I've had problems with flow rate because the oil is obviously much more viscous than the water. And uh, I can always dial it back with this valve, but I can't always add more. So, anyway, that's at 25 PSI too. Um, with this big compressor, this big compressor draws almost twice the power of this little one. So, I can seriously, I could probably run this thing at 60 PSI and draw some serious flow rate through it, which is going to be awesome. And uh, the worst comes to the worst, I can actually just take all my compressors, in fact all four of my fridge compressors together um, won't exceed my 20 amp circuit, so I can actually just hook them all together and make a big manifold if any, if need be. But uh, yeah, if not, then I can just use a regular old air compressor, but either way, yeah, that's the, this is the atomizer setup, and it's uh, working pretty well. So I'm going to see if I can figure out the uh, high voltage igniter electrodes, and uh, yeah, that'll be the next video. But yeah, I hope to get this running soon. So that's the update. It's been another Doug's Lab video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, rate, and comment.